Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. In today's show, I have a very special episode. We have with us the founder of Therasage joining us today. And Rob Bessner is creating technologies to help you thrive and live your most healthiest life. And for those of you new to the show, I'm all about radiance and helping people look and feel their best and live out their mission on this beautiful planet to help others live their best lives as well. So we have Rob Bessner joining us today. He's a philanthropist and the chief science officer, device developer, and co-founder of Therasage, premier infrared products. Rob has always been an advocate of natural health and wellness. Graduating from Boston University in pre-med, engineering, psychology, and business, he continued on to postgraduate work at Case Western Medical School in naturopathic medicine. After many years of illness, Mr. Bastner's teenage daughter was diagnosed with Lyme's disease. This began his mission to find alternative holistic and homeopathic avenues of treatment. He discovered the natural healing effects of infrared frequencies and began developing specialized devices and applications. When he saw the positive results, he felt compelled to share what he had discovered and formed Therasage, recognized as the leader of integrated infrared technology. Therasage has built a reputation with the healthcare community and mainstream public by educating and creating special cutting edge applications and protocols unique from the rest. A professor for the World Federation of Infrared Medicine Societies, an annual contributor at the World Committee on Infrared, a member of the Education Committee of the prestigious Hippocrates Health Institute, a foundational member of the Holistic Leadership Council, member of the Consumer Health Summit, community for founders in wellness and fitness, a presenter at medical integrative and anti-aging health conferences, as well as the host and contributor on podcasts and online summits, radio, TV shows, and best-selling author, board member of several nonprofit organizations, and considered a leading scientist in the field of integrated inf- infrared technology. Bessner continues to research and develop new devices and health science applications to bring the power of healing with nature to the world. Welcome, 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 Robbie from Therasage. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. great. And thanks, for thanks for having me. And, and more, more importantly, importantly, thanks for the thanks opportunity, for the opportunity to, to share, some share some ideas with you and your community, and, your community, and hopefully, hopefully elevate, elevate and, and, and sort of inspire people, people to understand, understand um, about, about primal healing, healing and about, and about uh, how, how resourceful nature is in our relationship, relationship to nature and allowing us to basically be vital and live, find our purpose, find our bliss and, you know, live out our lives the way kind of nature uh, intended us to, to be. Mm-hmm. And for everybody tuning in, Robbie and I had the pleasure of connecting quite recently at a health conference. And we, we actually spent about an hour getting to know one another And I was able to learn some of the behind the scenes things that you actually integrate in your technology that truly impressed me and are some things that I know about that I don't talk about publicly and you infuse into your products, which is fantastic. Now, Robbie, the the unlimited dollar question is, what is radiance to you? Well, it's a great question because I, I feel it the answer comes from kind of two different places. There's the radiance from within and then the transmission of that inner self and that energy and how that presents itself in a sense to the rest of the world. And so, um, and then there's the radiance that maybe has a more scientific definition, which usually connects to the energies of the world or the energies of nature and how they interact with us. And so I feel like right now talking to you, it's more about our own inner self, our own inner energies, our own inner radiant radiances and the field that we create around us. And then that field and how it attracts other people into our field that hopefully um, have kind of a like-minded energy uh, and, and then how it just expresses how we're so all connected in that way. 
So radiance to me has a lot of definitions. And so today it presents itself in just the interaction with me, you, and, and your community. Um, but in science, it has a lot to do with like the way that um, sun energy and nature's energies uh, interact with the plant and the animal kingdom. Mm, so eloquently stated, Robbie. And you may or may not know this. I actually have a very similar perspective to that answer as well. And I've never come across anyone I've interviewed on the show that does as well. And in accordance with Ayurveda, the radiant body is the 10th body. It's the electromagnetic projection of all of our other body systems operating at a specific frequency. So your body, mind, spirit, energy, and then other layers to ourselves. So your definition is actually in alignment with the Ayurvedic definition. It's this electromagnetic projection or field, if you will, that absolutely has the potential to help us look and live better and form our community and relationships through also building confidence through looking great and also feeling great so that we can be confident in any situation and communicate effectively and of course live our life's purpose. So thank you so much for sharing your perspective on that as well. Now, Robbie, I would love to hear from you why you really started your company. And as everyone has heard, there was you know, a sick family member that I can only imagine you did absolutely everything for. And I would just love to hear your story and why you are so passionate about creating health technologies. Okay, and uh, looks like Jasmine wants to join us on our discussions. So come on over here. Oh, um, animals always tend yes, to want to tune meet, in. <laughs> please beat Jasmine, and she's 11 years old and still a puppy. Um, so, but she hears me talking to you and your community, and she wants to be part of our discussion today. So, of course, if of she's course. not too much of a distraction, um, I'm just going to set her here on my lap, and she'll be happy. Okay, so the backdrop. Um, let me see my oldest child, my daughter, Julia, she contracted chronic Lyme disease um, when she was in her early adolescence, probably 12 to 15, something like that. Um, this goes back 30 plus years ago. And then there was a lot less information about Lyme disease. There were a lot less Lyme literate doctors. We lived down in South Florida. And we weren't kind of Lyme centric, like uh, Lyme, Connecticut, where it got its name from New York, New Jersey, those that tri state area. Uh, we weren't living there. So it didn't wasn't really on our radar that in fact, the symptoms and the way my daughter was expressing herself could have been at all related to Lyme. But um, so we found out in a very serendipitous way that in fact, she had Lyme disease. And so I, um, uh, we found and sought after we had means. And so we were able to find uh, the, what, who was considered and probably still is considered one of the top Lyme literate doctors in the country, probably globally, uh, who was located up in New York. And back 30 years ago, we didn't have virtual medicine. We didn't have um, the uh, ways that um, medical doctors interact in today's world. Back, back then, we had to fly up to New York and my wife and I took, ten, took turns every six to eight yeah. weeks, uh, fly to New York, fly back down to Florida, then put in or tweak the protocol, her protocol, another six to eight weeks, go up and tweak again and so forth. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it became very clear to me in the very early stages of that dynamic that um, the onus of healthcare maintenance is really on the individual that's sick, their close surrounding family members, if they're lucky enough to have support there, maybe then the community, and then whatever science, internet, interaction, serendipity of meeting people that have like-minded symptoms or challenges can bring that information feed, can bring into the decision-making process. And so having a healthcare background, um, I sort of took a little bit more initiative uh, in helping my daughter or creating with my daughter a system 
developing technologies that could support help her support her own health challenge. Uh, <clears throat> so I organized a trip, went to China, I was there from saw 65 factories over three and a half months. And um, decided to well, well, actually, what happened first was I looked at the way my daughter was expressing herself, and she had high levels of inflammation, uh, toxicity, she experienced body pain and cognitive challenges. And so I focused on toxicity and looked at the most modern ways to detox the invasive kind and the non invasive kinds and then discovered there that there's actually uh, frequencies of sunlight that when they come into the body, they actually interact, create a vibration that's called a bioresonance. And that vibration basically mobilizes all the toxins in your body. And I thought that was revolutionary. Now, 30 years ago, I'm talking about the full spectrum infrared frequencies that are derivation of sun energy. So 30 years ago, we had infrared technology in the US, but it wasn't really mainstream in the medical community. It was mostly being used by sports medicine doctors to uh, get players to heal faster and get back on the field. So there that intrigued me. Uh, and so I um, thought there was a fit. I found two factories I wanted to work with. I put on my engineering hat. I started to develop um, some technology for proprietary personal use within our family. Uh, Julia responded so well to this kind of technology that by then, by the way, again, we, it was not a virtual medical um, kind of environment. So we had the main Lyme literate doctor that was located on Long Island in New York. Then they, he corresponded with a doctor practitioner here in Florida. Uh, that was for main interaction on Lyme. Then there was a general practitioner pain specialist, a um, endocrinologist, a psychiatrist, because in Lyme, Lyme mimics many diseases, Rachel. So so oftentimes when science or medicine can't come up with a diagnosis or um, let's say the root cause of the, of the symptom or the challenge, they just say, well, it's not in your blood work. It's not in anything I know. So it must be psychological. So, you know, you're just making it all up. And that's very common. And it's very sad to me because there are, you know, maybe hundreds or thousands, thousands of patients that um, are left without an answer, even in today's world, because, and that's partially because of the lack of information on Lyme, but also because Lyme disease mimics many other diseases. And so it's really hard to diagnose. Uh, and so, so that was all that stuff was going on 30 years ago. Plus we were fortunate in a sense, because we were able to get a clinical diagnosis early enough. And that set me off on my own interest in trying to create a healing profile protocol profile for my daughter to employ to help her manage her care. And so that led me to China. I started developing infrared devices because if I felt, and this was part of a deep study, and you may have experienced this also in your own path that there's a strong correlation between toxicity, inflammation, and symptom. And so I thought if I could be proficient at lowering, figuring out a way to lower my daughter's toxicity, then I would lower her inflammation and then lower her symptoms, or maybe some of her symptoms would abate. And that in the, that process, she would get more of her life back, which gave her hope and many, and that's a big thing that will to live and, and that, um, that uh, it's so important from an emotional point of view, to have that hope as an ingredient to stay compliant or to stay um, sort of much, sort of involved in the in the treatment plan and in getting healthy or getting back on the road. It's such an important component that oftentimes is overlooked in many medical practices or even in protocols. So I'm very keen and, you know, maybe not today, but at a later time we can get back on and talk about emotional healing because I think it's a way underserved component to actually completing um, a full healthcare treatment plan for individuals. And so for us, I developed some devices, Julia started getting some pretty cool results 
the teams of doctors that were around her were basically mostly in infectious disease. They saw her improvement. They asked for us to start developing devices for them. And that was kind of the genesis of our company. Uh, we weren't funded. We didn't have a VC. We didn't have a business plan. We just had our connection to source and um, our need to, uh, to help our daughter uh, with her own challenges, which it became very clear very early out that it wasn't just a story about her, that she was just a metaphor for all the people out there that needed the same kind of love and attention. Um, we just didn't know that was our service at that time. And then very shortly after we saw, you know, that sort of story um, became unfolded, we started to realize that we were just a vessel or that I am just a vessel in my creations of healthcare devices and applications to help everybody. What a beautiful legacy of your beautiful daughter and how you've helped her. You helped, you really helped her during a hard time. And, you know, I also have a family member who's dealing with Lyme's disease and it's really challenging. And it's sort of one of those things that when oxidative stress is elevated, you know, toxins from our environment, whether from the workplace or in the home, it can just really add to things. So thank you for sharing your story and what prompted you to begin to create technology. And as she has a beautiful legacy and place in your heart. And it, it's really important for all of you listening to learn from people and hear people that are operating in integrity and that are here to be of service. And for all of you listening, at the end of the day, the most brightest radiant people that I know and that I support either as clients or on the business and branding development side of things that are of service. But we need technologies and tools to help us be able to do that. And especially in today's society, I wrote a recent research article on oxidative stress status and its impacts on the skin. And I found a couple main components that really, if we can modulate and purify, that oxidative stress will be lessened. And then you're going to be more beautiful. You'll feel better. Your body composition will be improved, but also from the emotional standpoint too. And I do happen to know that in the behind the scenes of your products, you do integrate specific frequencies and technologies to actually support that. And when we were speaking and you shared with me a few behind the scenes things, which honestly, it's, it's, if I share it, it's just not going to land with a lot of people uh, unless you kind of know about things like vortex based mathematics and all of that. But there truly are technologies that can help support us on the emotional level. And it's just great that you also infuse that in what you do. And I greatly appreciate that. I would love for you to share with us, Robbie. In my paper, I talk about purification of air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, so purifying and reducing our exposure to those to reduce inflammation. You're going to have better skin when you reduce inflammation in general. And then also detoxing. What ways can we create a safe and healthy home? And why is that important? Wow. I think you struck every chord on my, on my scale when you went through your, what, what I do and spend a lot of time with is teaching about primal healing and it addresses basically all the elements yeah. of nature and how we interact. And, um, and I also look like to look at, um, the way we, we interact with nature, ancient cultures and how, and the kinds of health, integration that these cultures provided for, um, to their, uh, communities, you know, to their cultures. So I'm kind of looking at it from a lot of different perspectives. And in today's world, mostly in the modern world, mostly in the urban environments, suburban environments or, or, um, or rural areas, you know, are, they have a little bit more time because they're a little bit less connected to a lot of the technology that I feel is accelerating um, the uh, trends, the high tr uh, steep trends in all the chronic diseases. And so, and that's partly because the environment is so toxic and partly because of the epigenetics, the choices that people are making 
um, their proclivities and foods and um, lifestyle choices that are activating recessive parts of their genetics mixed with the environment that's causing a lot of the health challenges that we're, all, everyone seems to be experiencing these days. Um, healthy home is a good topic for me because it, it, um, it starts there and may even end there in some cases, you know, like through the whole COVID experience, we had isolation and people were homebound. And then um, that gave, and they were disconnected to community, right? And so, uh, so that presented a brilliant opportunity to actually take inventory on all the toxic relationships and not just to people, but to your, your environment, you know? Um, so it gave us an opportunity to look at that. Hopefully some of us were able to do that. And also the systems at play. I think that there was, um, you know, um, you know, you're up in Canada and partially in the time in the U S but looking at the U S and the Western approach to medicine, I think that it gave, um, a blaring example of some of the parts of Western approach to medicine and how broken it might be. Um, and so that created an opportunity for people to look for alternative ways to try to help and heal. Okay. So, um, on that concept and taking a healthy home is a big one for me because you speak, you know, maybe, um, if you're sleeping a decent for a decent night, it could be somewhere between six and eight hours. And so now you're in that home environment. Um, if you were in isolation or post isolation coming out of COVID, there was a whole kind of rebirth or accelerated um, interest in home based businesses and virtual businesses. So people were now came out the other end of the tunnel, but rather than going back to traditional workplace where they may have reported to an office. Now they're doing a lot of home based businesses and virtual um, interaction, again, bringing you into the home. So how do we make a safe home? <clears throat> so you kind of touched on a few um, chords before notes. And um, one that is uh, very keen to has to do with electromagnetic fields and all the modern conveniences of the energies that many of the wireless networks and Bluetooth devices and things like that, what they offer us in convenience, but then how does it affect our, our body energy? Our and body my voltage? opinion is that electromagnetic frequencies and wireless cellular radiation are the smoking of our generation. Oh yeah, totally. Um, I, there's a guy I love named Darren Olean and he wrote a book recently called the fatal conveniences. And it speaks exactly to this topic. So for all of you in the audience that's listening, he's a dear friend of mine, has an amazing podcast also like you and touches his community, but, um, but he does focus greatly on the things that we should know. Like for instance, Rachel, do you know what the number one um, worst chemical in found in your household could be? Just take a quick guess. I'm going to say phthalates, plastics, PVCs. Yeah, well that, yeah, that's very prevalent. Um, mm -hmm. what I was searching for was like Clorox or Windex or one of the ones that people right. feel very, you know what, with. you know, what's funny. That's not even on my radar because I don't go near those things. So that's, it wasn't even in my field for that, yeah. but for most people listening, absolutely cleaning products. Right. And I know you have actually a technology that can support that. Yeah. So, well, one side is unfortunately, most people are kind of a little bit of, I call them asleep at the wheel because they're depending on the EPA and the FDA and all these agencies. And again, I'm focusing on the U S that have purported or present themselves to be helping us and, and uh, protecting us. But as we discovered, not just from COVID, but just through information that many of these agencies are influenced by specialty groups and they are a little bit more money oriented than they are about health orientation. So take for instance, um, the frequencies that are, um, that are regulated by the FTC, which is the trade commission and the FCC, which is the communication division. So that's the groups or the agencies that set the guidelines by how powerful these microwave towers can be and your cell phones are and the, um, RF, like the gigahertz wireless telephones that, you know, that, you know, they're not they're not um, internet phones, but they are still connected to the towers. 
they emit the, just as much radiation, almost oh, as totally. much as a and router in does. Cases, in many cases, worse. So when we looked at those agencies, and then we asked the question, how many health-minded people are on the panels that actually decide what levels of or magnitude of power that these different handheld devices can have? There's not one single, normally I would say, close your eyes, Rachel, what do you see? Okay. But virtually there's no one that's health-minded guiding those decisions. So basically it's mostly economically driven. And so here we are sort of asleep at the wheel, thinking that these agencies are there to protect us and set guidelines that have health-minded interests, but yet in fact, the reality is they, they don't. And so that's why our discussion today is so important and reaching out to the community to let them know that it's the, the onus is on us to get the information and be able to understand that and then integrate these concepts into your home to protect your family. Like for instance, my son who's 33 just had his first child. Um, her name is Isla Jewel and she's now about eight or nine months old. So um, my daughter-in-law, the first thing she did was, wow, you know, I, I just gave birth and she was a two weeks later. And the first thing she did was she bought one of these wireless devices that you put in the baby's room that has a camera and an audio track. And then that leads to a receiving end that she can carry on her person or have in the living room. So it gives her a sense of freedom because she can watch the baby, but she doesn't have to be in the same room. I know you're shaking your head. You're doing that and I'm doing that, but maybe some of the people listening today are just thinking this is okay, you know? Anyway. Or they have their babies and young ones in the back of their Tesla, sitting yeah. on top of batteries. That too. Same thing, same discussion. Well, what we've discovered in the lab and through research, and there's more and more new research coming out on this topic, is that these wavelengths are very, they interrupt the neural pathways. And particularly now you've got a zero-year-old child, days old, a week old. And you have this device that's drawing these fields of energy that are exogenous, meaning that they're man-made. It's not a natural event at all, but they're coming in the field of the child, the infant. And the, the child is now their neural pathways. Their brains are still in formulation. And so the fields interrupt that, that, um, interaction in truly connecting the dots in your neural pathways, which I think is partially the uh, a contributing factor on the autistic rates in the U.S. and probably around the world. I think well it's also as... a blood flow thing with the red blood cell morphology yeah. that technological frequencies are doing. And in layman's terms, your red blood cells start to stick together and then you don't get good blood flow to your brain, your skin, your other organs. So these things, you know, they're not only affecting the next generation, but they're affecting us right now. And for us to be effective in life and in relationships and family, we need to use effective solutions. And some of the technologies that you have, I mean, it's everything from PEMF mats for grounding, portable and affordable saunas, your cold plunges that you can easily have on your patio, as well as water purification technology, shower heads, ozone generators, field generators. I mean, what else am I missing that, that you've created to wow. touch on? You literally have everything for air, water, lighting, electromagnetic mitigation, and then also right. detoxing. So I, yes. I truly tip my hat to you, Robbie. Thank you. Because you and your company and your mission check all of those boxes of really what I think we need to, based on my research and experience, to have a healthy home, to have yeah. a healthy family. True. And, you know, you name them off as if it was a grand plan. Um, but truly, it was cathartic. We we're, Our company is close to 25 years old. And so it started with just one aspect, harnessing sunlight and using that wavelength of full spectrum infrared to mobilize toxins. 
but then along the way, um, again, a vessel and just getting downloads from my sources and my connection, uh, I started to get attuned to some of the other challenges that people have been expressing and seeing, you know, the direction that modern societies were going. And so I, I'm, I don't mean, and again, I don't come from a place of judgment. I don't mean to say that all cell phones are bad or wireless networks are bad or Tesla wire uh, electric cars and bikes are bad. If that was the only stress or that we had to talk about today, then we'd probably be kind of okay. But the challenge is, is that again, they're not very well regulated and they're, they are um, what people focus on and what these companies that make these devices do is they prey on what, you know, the public wants and they're feeding into that. And so everyone wants to game faster and they want to drive, you know, they think that buying a Tesla or, or a electric car is saving a carbon footprint. If they really knew that it uses up more of a carbon footprint to make the battery that drives the car, if they really understood that, then they'd see that actually it's all smoke and mirrors, right? Well, um, that's but, the funny thing is that the consumer has desires based on what right. they've been programmed to believe and to value. Mm -hmm. So things are really scrambled in today's yeah. society. So I think it really comes down to getting back to basics, getting sunlight, grounding outside, drinking clean water, getting fresh air, being off technologies and being with your family and having fun outside. However, it's just, it's not the way that the constructs of today's society operate. We need to be inside. We need to be on our computers. We need to drink coffee to keep ourselves going. And the food that we get access to isn't always the best. And, you know, there's, there's so many decisions that we make day in and day out. And it's until you have an awareness of this framework, I basically wrote my research paper to give the biohacking community a framework because there's so many different gimmicky things, bright, shiny objects in the health, wellness, and biohacking world. So it's, what are the five things to focus on? What, what I believe should be addressed first to essentially purify the way that we live and operate. And then there's other things that we can add to you know, amplify and rejuvenate and regenerate, regenerate further and be better and more powerful. But you, you really, it's not going to be as effective and powerful if you still have these other inflammatory triggers and toxins that contribute to oxidative stress. And so my angle is always the skin. How can we look better? And by looking better, it's actually less of a superficial need and desire than a lot of people think. Because many clients I've worked with over the years that are 60, well into their 90s, are more beautiful and more attractive and more energetically appealing to be around than people I see in their 20s and 30s that don't have signs of aging. So what is that? And it, it really is also just getting back to the basics, right? Family freedom, fun, finances, have those checked out, right? All the Fs, if, if I can put it simply there, you know, those really are kind of basic needs. And the health is such a key facet, but people are just, I think, really distracted with ads and, you know, this influencer is talking about this. And you're absolutely right. It's about getting back to the primal needs. But the way that we live and operate now in modern society, it poses a challenge. So when you set your home up with air purification, which you have, water purification, which you have, EMF mitigation, which you have, lighting mitigation, which you have in light therapy, as well as detox support, if you just have these set up in your home and have these technologies and, you know, save and do one at a time, I, I think it's just really going to set the home life up for success. And then it's just operating. You don't even have to think about it. It becomes part of your lifestyle. It's not like this extreme thing of looking after yourself so you look good and feel good. It's really what we need to do to have better relationships and have healthier families. Because at the end of the day, you're absolutely right. It is about community. But it's up to us to operate in the way that we see is valuable. And then when we're operating that way, guess what? it's much easier for us to discern 
who those other valuable people are to add to our community that have shared values. And then there's going to be some people that might start to notice, oh, wow, you're looking really good. What are you doing? You have more energy. You don't have brain fog anymore. And then because you've learned these things, especially by tuning into the show here and using these types of products, then you're going to not be a preacher on a soapbox, right? Preach for the fire hose situation, but slowly drip maybe one thing into this other individual's life that they can improve upon one thing at a time. So you don't overwhelm them. So I'm just really proud of you and grateful for what you and your wife and your, your family story is truly all about and the technologies you're making. I think they're at really great price points as well. I know in the biohacking space, sometimes people can think, oh, it's just for the rich. It's just for the elite. No, it's for everyday regular people, just like you and I listening to the show and who just want to be good people and feel and look our best and have satisfaction in life. Do you have any closing words for us today, Robbie? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not so bleak. You know, we, yes, we have challenges, but I think that um, the challenge, like the way that, the way that um, society life ex presents itself, I, I guess the big, you know, some phrases, catchphrases, one of my big ones these days is notice what you notice. Like wake up and just enjoy your, um, your life a little bit, you know, um, be bold. And we have a great friend, uh, um, Jennifer Cohen in California. She just wrote a book, Be Big, Better, Bold, something like that. And it's just about experiencing life and allowing um, serendipity into uh, to just allow you to really see a side of you, take a little bit of risk and and just see how the, the universe responds to that. Um, yeah, I, this whole healthy home concept is way important. Um, I think it's geocentric, so I love the fact that you brought that up. Yes, we have covered a lot of bases, but it didn't happen overnight. It just started with creating a safe place, which was the sauna, and then developing technology that integrates with it. And that just built into, became a family of kinds of devices and solutions. And yes, we are affordable and we're portable. And part of that is our philanthropic need because we experienced with our daughter, sometimes some months there were $20,000 in medical expenses and travel expenses and, and uh, medicines and so forth. And so coming from that orientation, we felt that the best we could do to offer from a philanthropic point of view was we make a small margin and mostly goes back into research and building more inventory to help more people um, you know, feel better. But it's just offering a lower barrier of entry so that everybody can experience what we've experienced and then really create a healthy health span. So everyone's talking about extending lifespan, but what good is having a long life or longer life if you're not living a fulfilled or vital life? And so we're interested in expanding your health span by not only extending your lifespan, but also integrating the quality of life that you're having. And so if you look at, I live in South Florida, retirement center, you know, and I don't look at, I think this culture here is, is you know, like not about the, the golden years. They're not experiencing the joy that they've worked their whole lives for. They go from clinic to clinic and, and it's sort of mediocre at best. And so my goal would be to try to inspire people listening today that there is a better way. It does take a little bit of effort and education. And so I love you and what you're doing with your program in bringing people like myself and other, you know, maybe experts in different areas to sort of inspire people to understand that there are affordable ways that, that we do have to take some of the responsibility for our healthcare and for the challenges, but to listen in and notice what you notice about the way your body responds and the way that you attract new energies to you that set, support your own health and vitality. And that's not just you and I, but when we start practicing that and our kids start to see how the kind of ways that we're practicing, now we're talking about real change. 
And that's what I'm interested in. I'm interested in not just affecting you, but affecting the generation that's coming on next. And so if we can shift our consciousness and we can make change and then our kids can see that change and they grow up in a household that has an infrared sauna and is EMF free and that when they sleep at night, their, their rooms are dark. So they get a good quality restorative sleep. I mean, simple principles. Um, I think that we're going to make a real difference. And again, I appreciate you having me here today to discuss some of these ideas. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your beautiful words. I love what you said, notice what you notice. But sometimes, and for those of you listening, you just don't know quite what to notice. So I absolutely encourage each and every one of you listening to read my article. It's open source. I wrote it for the clinician and also the client to understand the overt signs of oxidative stress, how that looks and what we can notice which includes things like redness, puffiness to the eyelids, irritation around the mouth, irritation to the scalp, things like brain fog, acne, skin redness. These are all overt signs that something's going on and to take extra good care of yourself. Live radiantly 99.99% of the time and the other 0.01% live a little. It's all about moderation in moderation and just really setting you up for success in your life so that you can be what you are here to be. Because at the end of the day, notice what you notice about what's important to you, what brings you satisfaction, what brings you joy, what brings you fun for you and your family. Do more of that. I wish to encourage you to do all of that today. So you can learn more about Robbie's products over at therasage.com. And you can also simply head over to my website, theschoolofradiance.com, where my biohacking page also shares my favorite technologies. And then if you go to the research tab on my website, you'll be able to read that paper. So start to notice what you notice and then continue to tune into the show here and listen from people who have similar values or operating from integrity or doing this in a positive way to put you in a positive emotional state, not scared and in fear or anything like that. And just start to learn what those blind spots might be. And for those of you needing some skin guidance, reach out for one-on-one, -on -one, join my tutorials. My membership is really where I go deep. So you probably heard me use some terms in this episode with Robbie that um, I just typically don't expand on on the show because it goes a little bit deeper. So that's what the membership is really all about. So if you feel called to learn a little bit more about some of the things that things like Robbie and I do behind the scenes, that's the membership. And today is officially your call to action to take action on that. Robbie, where can people find you? Where can people learn more about you? Probably number one is therasage.com. T H E R A S A G E dot com. We have a pretty active Instagram account, which I absolutely love. It's my first routine in the morning is just thumbing through and kind of getting the joy of people contributing their experiences with our products, um, all of which are unsolicited. So it just sort of says, whoa, you know, that's how I feel like I get validation is when we get that kind of love and feeling and energy. So that would be. Therasage Infrared, which is the way to get to Instagram. You can kind of call our 800 number, 888-416-4441, or you can simply just email support at infrared, at, sorry, at therasage.com. And one of my staff or myself or team member was more than happy to respond to any of your inquiries. Fabulous. Well, I look forward to seeing you again soon, Robbie. We're going to have a fantastic lunch with you and your beautiful wife. And, you know, one of these things on my journey is to surround myself with people that help me be a better person, whether it's through the way that they are, through what they're doing, or the technologies that they're making to help us all be better, be better, look better, and make a positive impact in the world. So thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. You're on the right track, hanging out with us here on the School of Radiance podcast. And I look forward to seeing you in our next episode here on the show. Have a beautiful, high vibe, radiant day, looking your best, feeling your best, and leaving a very positive, radiant impression everywhere you go. Because yes, the world needs more of that. 
And of course, this is not medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. We'll see you all again here very soon. And Robbie, I'll be seeing you in person soon. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Enjoy your day.